Hello students, this is Professor Sansom, and today I'll be talking about experiment number 11. In this experiment, you'll be using your knowledge of electrochemistry to identify unknown metals and their accompanying metal ion solutions. For part one of the experiment, you'll need to successfully assemble an electrochemical cell. You'll be using the PASCO SparkView software to measure the voltage of the cells that you'll create. If you haven't yet done so, download the PASCO software that can be found on Learning Suite. Today you'll be using the voltmeter and the red and black alligator clips. Upon plugging in the alligator clips, you should turn on the voltmeter and watch for the red flashing light. Once you connect them via Bluetooth on your computer, the light will flash green. In the SparkView program, select Build to create a new experiment, then select the first option with a single gray box. Click on 123. Then click Select Measurement and select Voltage for your measurement. Change the units to millivolts. In the lower left corner, click on 123 and then the Sigma symbol. Then choose Neen. This will average the voltage data, which helps to reduce the experimental noise that might impact your results. Next, you'll need to gather test tubes of your five unknown metal ion solutions and place the corresponding metal electrodes into each solution. You only need to fill the test tube about halfway with the, the ion solutions, but make sure it's enough that your metal electrode is submerged. You'll create your salt bridge by soaking a piece of string in potassium nitrate. Then place the string into the two test tubes so that each end of the string is submerged in the metal ion solutions. Make sure the string is pulled tight between the test tubes so it shouldn't dip down in between. Then place the clamps onto the metal electrodes. Remember the red clamp attaches to the cathode and the black clamp attaches to the anode. Now press the play button to begin and collect data for about five seconds and press stop. You'll repeat this process, just selecting play, collecting data for five seconds and stopping three times for each of the cells that you create. You'll need to work with your lab partner to create a plan to identify your five unknown solutions without having to test every possible combination of metals. You'll use your data from part one to solve for the unknown solutions. Once you've identified the solutions, you can move on to part two. For part two, you'll place a strip of metal directly into a solution of ions with a different identity. You'll use your data from part one to help you choose which combinations of metals and ions will react spontaneously and which will not react spontaneously. In order to do this part, you'll have to think about what's happening at the molecular level. For example, if reduction is happening at the cathode, what does that mean about the atoms, ions, and electrons? Reduction is gaining electrons. Can my metal atom gain electrons? It's possible, but it's more likely that my metal cation that's in solution is going to be gaining electrons. So think about the cathode and the anode in the original measurements that you made, and then which of those things should be the electrode and which should be the solution for part two. Thanks for listening and good luck.